Hi hello everybody hope you all doing great i am myself shridhar shravan i'm a technical trainer and a magician by profession and so today in this video we going to learn how to make a mobile application so as an example we going to create a game that is called balloon popping game so before we start let me show you how this balloon popping game going to look like so let me show you an example a balloon popping game let me show that in my phone uh, and you can see my phone over here so let me click on my on this app so you can see if the balloons which are dropping down when i click on it i mean when i touch it it pops actually my phone i'm just touching this and you can see the balloons are popping and also at the same time you can also see the score is increasing correct i'm just popping this off i love this game so just for an example i have taken three balloons you can have n number of balloons how much of balloons you want so let's get started so to do this app to do such kind of app like we need a software correct so here we going to use something called as app inventor so where do we find this app inventor to find this app inventor all you need is a browser so what i'm using is i'm using a chrome browser you can see this i'm using a chrome browser let me open a new browser okay so we as i told you we're going to use a software called as app inventor so we're going to type we're going to search for app inventor at any point of time you if you have any doubt or if you didn't get anything what you can do is you can just pause it there and you can come back and you can watch over and you can understand this i'll cover most of the topics and if you have any doubts still you can drop a question in a comment so here you have to search for app inventor let me search for app inventor when i search for app inventor this is the first result it shows mit app inventor this mit app inventor belongs to an organization called as MIT. So let me click on this link. When I click on this link, I get this page. So this is the welcome screen of MIT App Inventor. So we have to go to a editor where we can create our apps. So how to go to an editor? We have to click on this. Can you see this button which says Create Apps, which is orange in color? So we're gonna click on this. Let me click on this. So when I click on this, a new tab opens up, opens out, and it's gonna ask us for a email ID. Okay. So I have an account in this email ID. I have an account in this email ID. I'm gonna choose this. And when I click on this, I get this screen. This screen says terms of services. So there are a lot of terms from our MIT App Inventor. and if you keep scrolling down at the bottom you get to see a button that says i accept the terms of service we're going to click on this so when you get to the screen you get a lot of terms terms of service and when you get to the bottom of the screen you get this button that says i accept the terms of service if you have a time you can read all this I'm going to click on I accept the terms of service. When I click on I accept the terms of service, I get this. But before getting here, you need a email ID. How do you create an email ID? Open a new tab, go to Gmail. And so as I have an email ID, so this will be shown. add another account so when you click on create account you can create your own email id you can take your parent help and you can create your own email id and you can use that email id in our app inventor without an email id you can't proceed further so before before proceeding further what you can do is you can create a email id so you can take your parent help and please create a email id 
once the email id is created when after selecting the terms of like after accepting the terms of service then you get to see the screen and here what we going to do is here we going to check this because when you don't check this this going to be keep showing up every time when we open our app inventor that's why i'm going to check this box which shows which says do not show again and i'm going to click on continue so this is a welcome screen we're going to click on start a blank project where do you see that that stay in the bottom here so start a blank project you can see here i'm going to click on this button and i get to see this so it's asking for a project name as i told you before we're going to create a balloon popping game so let's give it as balloon popping game so balloon pop or balloon pop it be simple sweet and simple and you might keep some space in between so our mit app inventor doesn't allow a space for the project name so instead of space you can use underscore or else you can just delete the space you can you can just keep the name without a space so our app inventor doesn't allow space for the project name so please avoid space in between the project name and later you're going to click on okay let me click on okay so and wait for some time if we wait for some time the editor screen will open ta da here is our editor screen So this is a place where we're gonna create our app. So actually, this is we this we call it as a designer screen, and this is a place where we design our app. And what about the coding part? Yes, we also have a coding part. So here you can see on the right corner, right top corner, you can see designer, which is not highlighted because we are in designer. And next to that, we have something called blocks. When you click on this. it takes us to this page this is where we're going to do our coding it's called blocks because we're going to use block codes to code it so here you can see a lot of codes and also we have a default blocks there are many blocks so we're going to use this blocks and we're going to make a game out of this so let's go back to our designer page first we'll design our app so let's go to designer and this is a page a designer page and on the left side we have something called as palette under which we get to see all the components so initially we'll be under a heading called as user interface under user interface we get to see a lot of components like button checkbox date picker image and so on and when you come down you have something called as layout by clicking on on the layout it expands Oh, it expands and shows all the components under layout and under that we have media click on media it shows all the components under heading media and if you still scroll down you can see drawing an animation like this we have many headings and when you click on that the components under that heading will open up so to start with initially if you if you have observed our game initially we have a score correct on the top of the game there was a text called a score and there was a number which keeps increasing so we need something for that correct so we're going to go to our palette under the palette we're going to go to our user interface under our user interface we get to see something called as label l a b e l that was 1 2 3 4 5 5 that is the fifth item So we're gonna take this label and we're gonna drop it here. How do we take this? Drag this and drop it here. Drag it and drop it here. And whatever with the components we drag and we drop it on the phone, that can be seen here in the components. So we have a label. There is label one. If I take the same label again and if I drag and drop it, if I drag and drop this, you can see something called as label two. If I do it again. Table three, same thing. It's the same thing. So if I drag and drop it, you can see label four. But I don't want this label three and label four. How do I delete this? Let me select label three. How do I get to know I have selected label three? 
we get, we get to know in two ways. One, in components, you can see that it has a green background. Can you see that? It's a light green background, a greenish background. And also here you can see there is a border around it. Correct? That means that component is selected. Now we can click on this delete over here. So under the components, if we click on delete, it gets deleted. But before that, make sure which component is selected. Now, which component is selected? Yes, label 3 is selected. Let me click on delete. It's going to give a pop-up saying, deleting component will delete all the blocks associated with it. That means if you have any blocks, if you have done any blocks for this in a block session, that will be also deleted. It's okay. Let me click on delete. And also, I don't need label 4. Click on delete. I, I want this label 2 here next to it. But that doesn't happen. You can see. Because all the elements here or all the components here are arranged one below the other. But if you want the components one next to another, what you have to do is if we, on the left hand side where our palette is, if we scroll down, you can see something called as layout. Click on layout, you get to see the first one that is called as horizontal arrangement. So this is the one using which we can place the components one next to another. So it works like a shelf where we can keep one component next to another. Let me show you how it works. Let me take this and drop it over here. We can see the blue line. So the blue line shows where I wanted to drop it. I'll drop it above all the components. So it'll be here. Now what I can do is I can take this, I can put it inside this. And I can take this, I can put it inside this. So the both of the components are there inside. And I know it will be difficult to drop this thing inside the horizontal arrangement. So what we'll do is first we'll select the horizontal arrangement and we'll make it bigger. How can we make it bigger? So what we're going to do is make sure the horizontal arrangement is selected and we have to go to the properties. Under properties, you can see horizontal arrangement one. That means we are under the properties of horizontal, horizontal arrangement. If we come below this, if you see, if we just come down, one, two, three, four. The fourth property says height. Okay. We'll not do anything for the height. We want this till here. So we're going to increase the width. Width is the vertical size from here to here. So I'm going to expand it vertically or from this corner to this corner. I, wa I want to expand this from here to here. So for that, I'm going to go to width. That is W I D T H and I'm going to go to automatic. It says by default, it says automatic and I'm going to go for fill parent. Select fill parent and click on OK. Unless you click on OK, it don't work. See, but what do you, what do you mean by fill parent? Fill parent in the sense, like you can see in the components, this is the component section. In the component section, you can see horizontal arrangement. Before that, we can see screen one. You can see all these components comes under screen one. So for all these components, the parent is a screen one. What is a screen one? The area what you see here, the entire white screen here, that is our screen one. So this is our parent. So the entire white screen, the white area, that is our parent. So in the height, let me go to horizontal arrangement. In the height, if I give it as Sorry, uh, in the properties for horizontal arrangement, for the width, if I give it as fill parent, it's going to occupy the available space. So there is space available from here to here for the width. And it just occupied. Okay, we are doing only for the width. If you do it for the height, what will happen? It will just occupy till here, whatever the available space. So for the height, we'll just keep it as automatic. Automatic in the sense, it will just the height get adjusted to the component which is placed inside it. 
see it gets adjusted to it okay let me put this thing first so yeah so when you're dragging and dropping you can see that where you want to put it will be highlighted in blue in color let me put label one first and label two next so label one we're going to change the text as score and label two we're going to change the text as zero so this one you're going to keep it recent so let me change the label one text where can we change the label one text yes in properties so first let's make sure that is selected you can see a green border around and also you can see the background is greenish in color and we're going to go to properties and it says label one and if you keep going down last third property or last fourth property we have something called as text inside that we have a text which says text for label one let me remove all that and let me change the text as score and also i'll put a colon it's gonna look like this you see it and if you wish to make it bold you can check this it will become bold and if you want to change the background color of only this text you can change the background color of only this text and also if you want to change the text color the, the last third property says text color here when you click on this you get to see a lot of colors here you can select one see the text color changes if you don't like any color you can go for the custom colors and you can choose any color which you wish click on done see it changes into red color you can do all this experiment on your own and if you want to change the font size initially it is 20 initially it is 14 it can make it as 24 so that it will become bigger let's do the same thing for the label 2 let's select the label 2 go for the text this time this is going to be 0 because initially it's going to be 0 later this number keeps increasing as we pop the balloon so let me select this let me make the text size as 24 and uh, uh, text color let it be which color green color I think it's very light uh, yellow also very light color make sure it should be dark because our background is light in color let me make it as blue so let's this looks good so we are done with this code now we have to do our canvas oh sorry our uh, uh, i was talking about canvas in the sense like we have to do a background for our game yes for the game we need a background because like the balloon gonna fall from the top or the balloon gonna move from the top to the bottom for all this to, thing to happen we need a background so for this we need to use a component called as canvas and where do we find canvas here in the palette so in the palette where do we find canvas if we scroll down you see something called as drawing and animation when we click on drawing and animation we get to see three components and our second component is canvas have you seen a canvas before you know where this canvas is used in a real world in a real world this canvas is used by painters to draw or to paint pictures or to paint a art and here we also going to use it to make a art yes so let me take this and drop it here and you can see that it looks very small and we're going to do a game on the small background now we have to increase the size of this we can make it as fill parent where we can where we can change this width and the height height is that horizontal size width is a vertical size horizontal size is up and down width is left and right so where we can change this yes it's in the properties so make sure that is selected so canvas is selected go to canvas property where is width 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 yes the height is here the width this year so let me go for the height first select fill parent click on ok unless and until when you click on ok it won't work you can see it still says automatic but right, you can see fill fill parent is selected until and unless we click on ok it will never get reflected or never gets reflected yes now let's change the width to fill parent Ta-da! 
yes we got we got a big canvas on which we gonna place a balloon to pop but to place a balloon like we can't just take a balloon we need something to hold the balloon so it's there is another component to hold a balloon picture that is called as image sprite this is a component which holds many of the images or the any components which has to be displayed so we're going to use image sprite this is going to hold our balloon so let me drag it and put it here somewhere and here we have our image sprite and for this and you can you'll be wondering image sprite is there where is the balloon actually I have a balloon in my desktop you can see this there is a balloon here it has no background actually but where do you find a balloon like this you can ask a google 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 find me a balloon sorry balloon so you can search for balloon png balloon png what that balloon we understand balloon what is this png png means like it's a format of a picture it's a picture format where there will be a no background so let's search for one and let's go to image and there are a lot of images here we need a individual balloon so here we have a green balloon let me click on this and you can see still there is a white background for it but still it works we can take this let me click on save image as right click on the image right mouse button and scroll down you see save image as click on it and let me save it in my desktop why did, why in my desktop it's very easy to access so click on desktop it has some big name let it be any name click on save and you can see that the image is saved close this and even i don't need this now i'm back here now how, how to upload the same image here but before uploading it what you have to do is you have to resize this image sprite it's so small first let's resize it let's change the height and the width where we can change the height and the width yes under property before that what you have to make sure yes the image sprite is selected or not you can see there is a green square on it and there is a greenish background that means it's selected and also you can see the name here so let's go for the height here we are not going to go for field parent i don't want to occupy i don't want the balloon to occupy entire screen so i want the height to be somewhere around 100 pixel what is this 100 pixel 100 is fine what is this pixel pixel is a unit of measurement in our digital screen for example our computer screen is a digital screen our mobile screen is a digital screen all the digital screens uh, the unit of measurement is pixels so i'm going to take 100 pixel how much is this 100 pixel so given 100 pixel i click on ok you can see this is 100 pixel so the height going to be 100 pixel and the width width going to be 70 pixel why height so much and width little bit because if you see this image where is our image Yes, image is here. Let me open the image. You can see the height of the image is more than the width of the image. Correct? The horizontal measurement is more than the vertical measurement. Correct? Vertically it is less from left to right. The measurement is small. And horizontally it is large. Comparatively it is large. So that's why the height I have given it as 100 pixel. Okay. And the width as 70 pixel so it looks like this now it's time to upload the image where do we upload the image if you just come down make sure the image sprite is selected and if you keep coming down you can see something called as picture and just below that you can see none click on it you don't see a balloon image here because we have not uploaded it yet let me click on upload file let me click on choose file 
and where it is i'm in my downloads but my picture is in desktop i'm going to click on desktop here i have my balloon image so this is my balloon image which i have kept it previously now let me choose this one this one is the image which i have downloaded so click on open and we're going to click on ok uploading yes did you see that the balloon is here but can you see that there is some white thing on it because the balloon is not transparent but that's okay but this game will still work but if you want a transparent image let's go for balloon.png finding a transparent balloon image is quite difficult it needs some skill so it looks it has to be white in color and when you click on it it's still white in color no. it should be white in color when you click on it the white in color should turn into boxes like this there is boxes actually you can see there is a box on it but this is not actually a png image you can see this is white in color let me click on it i still white in color no white in color click on it yes now it's not white in color you can see boxes see where before you clicking on it it should be white in color and when you click on it it should be you should supposed to see boxes and there are images where you can see boxes before clicking on it it's not the image you you must see where is the balloon got ha here it is it should be white in color before and when you click on it the white should change into a box this is an image let me save this image in my desktop it has blah blah some name click on save it got downloaded let me go to my app inventor delete this or you don't have to delete it you can go to pictures click on upload file click on choose file uh, and where is my image yes here is my image click on open click on okay uploading balloon image to a server wait for some time yes here we have the balloon image okay to change the balloon image first select it go to picture upload it choose file and select the select the file that's it done here we have my image so the image is here we got the image but still in properties we have to do something so we are done with the height we are done with the width we are done with the picture next here we have something called as rotates if this is checked what happens sometimes this balloon may turn upside down or it may turn in any direction but we don't want that to happen so let me uncheck this so by unchecking this the balloon will not rotate in any direction it will be it will be it will be in the same state now we have to also have to give a speed at which it gonna come from the top to the bottom let me give it as 6 so don't give it as 100 it will come very fast so let it be 6 and that's it last but not the least if you see the first one it says heading heading where it is heading to actually in the top it's gonna go from top to the bottom from here it's gonna come from the top to the bottom and again it's gonna go to the top and again it's gonna drop from the top so anything which is moving top to the bottom anything which is moving on a vertical or a vertical plane that is called as that we put it in a uh, something called as y axis and which moves something left and right that is called uh, we have something called as coordinate that is called x axis or x coordinate something which is moving upside down vertically that we call it as y coordinate i'll tell you what is that if you just scroll down you can see y is zero so y is zero the balloon is at the top i'll make y 100 click somewhere else this comes down 
I'll make it as 200. It'll further come down. I'll make it as uh, 280. It will further come down. So what happens to this Y value? If it is less, it will be at the top. If it is more, like 280, it will be in the bottom. Okay. So let it be 0. So that will be in the top. And where it has to, where it has to head, it has to head from here to here. At this place, what is the value? 6 to 69 or 270. So from here, it has to head to, to here. So we're going to give that number. So how much that was? That was 269. I'll make it as 270. Okay, if I make it as 270, let's see where it goes. 270. 270, it will be here. So from the top, the bottom is going to come here slowly at the speed of 6. So let's make it as 0. So heading it should be 270. So it's going to head to 270. Okay, this is all done. Let's just check. In image sprite, we have done these things that is, these properties we have set these properties that is heading 270, height as 100 pixel, width as 70 pixel, picture as uh, this picture, rotate is unchecked, speed is 6, and rest we will not touch, we will not do anything for the rest. So, this is all done, and also the last and the final thing we need a clock. So every few seconds, the clock could make sure the button is visible. So where do we get the clock? If we go to the sensor, so under sensor, one, two, three, four. The fourth block is clock. Let me take the clock and drop it here. And where is this clock? I can't see the clock. And don't worry, the clock is there. Can you see that? In the components, you can see the clock. And if I scroll down below the phone, you can see the clock. Okay, the clock is the one who's going to watch whether the balloon is visible or not. So everything in our designer part is ready. So we have a balloon, we have a score, everything is set. Now it's time for us to go for coding. Let's go to this block, the top right corner, you can see block, let me click on blocks. So this is a place where we're going to do our coding. If you want to come back, you can come back to the designers. You can see everything. And next to our designers, we can see blocks. We can click our blocks. And here on the left bottom corner, you can see all the components. Don't you see all the components which we have used? So we have horizontal arrangement, label one, label two, canvas, image, sprite, block. Same components which we have used in designers, correct? Screen, horizontal arrangement, label 1, label 2, canvas, image, sprite, clock 1. So why they are here? Because they are here to provide us some blocks here. We have some blocks. We have a lot of blocks. So to start with, we are going to go to our image sprite 1. Let me click on image sprite 1. And there are, if you scroll down, there are many blocks. Orange in color, orange blocks, purple blocks, green blocks. Yes, there are many blocks. If you want to scroll this down, make sure your cursor is placed correctly on this and then drag this down. Okay. Sometimes you might drag it like this, it won't work. So go on this, drag it like this. You can see many blocks here. So in this, we're going to take the last orange block. If we scroll down, the last orange block, that is before the purple block, we have this block. It says, image sprite one touched. What is mean, meant by image sprite one touched? Image sprite one is nothing but a balloon, if you remember. So this balloon is nothing but a image sprite one. So where is this? Yes, image sprite one. When the balloon is touched, what's supposed to happen? Okay, for that we're going to take touched and also don't confuse between this touch down, touch up. We have, we want touched. Okay, that's the last block before, before the uh, purple block. That's the last orange block. Let me take this block. 
drag it and put it here. Just like this, I have another block which will keep check on all the balloons, which is a component. Yeah, a clock is a component which gonna which gonna keep check on all the balloons, whether that is visible or not. For that, we're gonna take clock. We're gonna go for the clock, and in clock, the first component, the first there is only one orange block. This is the one. When clock one timer do. So clock timer every one second it's gonna keep checking. How do you know that one second? We go to designer. If you select clock, you have thousand. But I told one second, and here it is thousand. Doesn't make sense. Actually, this thousand is it is thousand milliseconds. If we convert thousand milliseconds into seconds, it will be one second. If I put it as uh, Six, seven, seven. Yeah, if you put it as seven, that means seven thousand milliseconds. If I convert that into a seconds, how much? How much? How much? You don't have to scratch your head much. If we convert thousand, seven thousand into seconds, it will be seven seconds. That's it. You, you have to just take the zeros out. If I put it as two thousand milliseconds, how many seconds? Just take the zeros out. What is left? Two. That's two seconds. So I'm going to take the two. I'm going to put it one. So how many seconds? Let's take the zeros out. And what is left? One. So that's one second. Let me go back. So every one second, this block's going to this block going to help me to check uh, uh, to keep a check on the balloon. So what we have to put something inside this? What we're going to put inside this? Let me let me tell you what is started. So. We're gonna go back to our image sprite one. So scroll down, image sprite one, and we now we need some green blocks. Yes, there is in green blocks there are two kinds of green blocks. One is a light green, another one is dark green. In light green there is no there is no text called as set, but in dark green we find a text called as set. Let me take the dark green. Okay. Sometimes when you click on this, you might get an error over here. You just click on OK and just ignore it. Now let me go back to image. See, this is what I was talking about. Internal error has occurred. Report a uh, debug. That's okay. Click on cancel. Click here somewhere. And again, go back to image sprite one. You will get it back. When you get when you get an error, close it. Click somewhere else here. Then go back. So here we're gonna go to our green block. So we need a dark green block. Okay, let me take any dark green block. Don't worry, which one is that? And we need dark green block, which should supposed to say not hide, but enabled. What is that? Enabled. So let me click on this. I get to see these options. Here I'm gonna find enabled. Where it is? Is over here, the first one. I tell you what is enabled is, and I need another block similar to this, but instead of enabled, I want it to be visible. You can go back, take any green block, click on this, change it to visible. So enabled, visible. So let me. I want another block that is set image sprite one visible. Another one. Now I can right-click on it. I can duplicate this, or else I can go here. I can bring another one, or else simply I'll right-click on it, duplicate. So I need two enabled and two visible. I have two visible. I'll change it to as enabled. So I have two. I have enabled visible. I have uh, enable and visible. Plus four blocks in total, two enables and two visible. We know what is visible. What is this enabled is? Enabled means which will allow us to touch. Visible means the component will be seen or not seen. Visible or non uh, non visible. Sorry, invisible. Enabled, which where we can touch. Visible, where we can see. Or it will be invisible. So for this, what we have to do is. 
here we have something called as built in blocks okay there's something called as control logic math text list dictionary in this we're going to go to logic click on this green one let me take a true and also go to this let me take a false so we're going to put a true or we're going to put a false so if i put true the object will be enabled so that we can touch it if i put a false the object will be disabled and we can't touch the object so let me put it as false and also change this thing to false if i put false to visible i can't see the image if i put true to a image sorry true to the image sprite for the visible i can see the sprite so let let this be false so this two set i mean this one will make the image it will make the image untouchable like we can't touch it and it will also make the image invisible and the same thing i'll make it as duplicate i'll put it here so I'll make it as true duplicate like this and how did i duplicate it just right click on it duplicate got it if you don't need this come and put it in the bin let me put it here so this set of block will make a image uh, disabled and invisible this set of block will make a image enabled and visible so where we gonna put this true we gonna make that true we gonna put that true in clock one timer make sure the true blocks enabled true visible true in timer enabled false visible false in touched and also at the same time we also have to make the balloon go up so if you remember in the designer for the sprite one we have given it as heading 270 that means it's going to head to 270 that is to the bottom of the screen so it's going to keep going and it's going to stay there we have to change the y value so anything vertical that is y coordinate so y if y make it as 0 it will be in the top y make it as 280 or 270 it will be in the bottom now what i have to do is to make the balloon come up i have to change the y coordinate to 0 how can i do this go back to the sprite scroll down take any dark green block change it to y you call this y and how much this supposed to be so i'll make it as 0 i'll go to this control logic math go to math scroll up 0 When you click on this, sometimes you'll be here, and you'll be wondering where is the zero? Nothing. Just scroll up and look for it. Scroll down and look for it. Have patience and search. It'll be there somewhere. So zero is here. Sometimes you'll be here, and you'll be like wondering what is this? I don't understand. Don't worry. Just scroll up. Go to the go to the scroll bar patiently, and scroll this up, and you'll get to see this block. Take it and put it here. So I'm gonna make it as y to zero. So let me put it here. Okay. So when the balloon is touched, it's gonna make it false, false, and gonna go back to the top. And this one is gonna make it visible every one second. So this much is done. And the game is almost done. But we need a score. Correct. But till here we will just run it and see how it looks. Click on build, save to my computer. And where do we run this app? We can run it in a phone, and also we can run it in our computer. If we are running it in a computer, we need this web page called as appties.io. Let this happen. Once this is done, it gets downloaded. I'll go to a new tab. I'll open appties.io. That is a p p e p i z e dot i o this is the one a p p e t i z e dot i o let me click on okay as i have my account it says uh, account log out and all those things let me log out now i'll go to demo oh, sorry upload 
this is the place where I can upload my APK or my application. So let this PHP open and later I have to give my email ID. So let me go here, it's keep happening. When it is keep happening, make sure you have you have opened this appetize.io slash upload, you'll be in this page. Or else appetize.io, then you can click on upload, you will land in this page. Let's wait for some time. So this is done 100% and once this 100% is done, you can see the app downloading. Sometimes it takes a lot of time, just have patience. See, you can see here, the app is downloaded, balloon, balloon pop dot apk. So when you click here, when you click on show and folder, it will show where it is, it's in downloads and there's a name, it will be there. Let me go back to my appetize.io slash upload and here first I have to click on select file. When I click on this, I get this window. I have to navigate to download because that app is in my downloads. So go to downloads. So here is the downloaded file. Select it. Open it. So it will get uploaded. By then, I'll give my email ID. I have a lot of email IDs. Let me give this email ID. So it says, file successfully uploaded. Now give the email ID. Click on generate. When you click on generate, it says success. Please check your email. Let me go to a new tab. And let me go to that. Email ID. Gmail. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, now the time is uh, 11.38, 11.38. Let me click on this. And I get to see a virtual phone like this. Tap to play. Yeah, click on it. Vanishes. Click on it. Vanishes. Click on it. Vanishes. Click on it, vanishes. Again, it comes from the top. But the score is not increasing. You can increase the score. Click on it, vanishes. So, this is just like a phone. See, I can click on the center button. You can see this. This works just like a phone. And I can open this, drag it. Mm, I can see all the menus, menu items. And click here. Close all the apps. And open the menu item. And where's my app? Where's my app? So my app is here. Bubble. Click on this. Drops. I click on it, it pops out. Hey, come on. Ah. Pop, 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 pop. Yes. Now this is working. This one. Now we have to increase the score. How can we do it? Let's go back. To increase the score and to store the score, we need something a container. Yeah. Container, what is this container? Have you seen a cookie jar? Yes, the jar is the container or the jar is also called as a variable and the cookies that is inside it, it's called as a value. So we're gonna see a cookie jar and the cookies. Where do I get this cookie jar? And to keep our cookie, where do I get the cookie jar? 
So here in built in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the eighth one which says variables. Variables are R cookie jars. So we're going to take this initialize global name. So this is a name which I'm giving to my cookie jar. Let me give it as a score. So this is a cookie jar which is going to store my score. I initially in my cookie jar, I'm going to have zero cookies. So I'm going to put math zero. So initially my score will be zero. The variable is nothing but it just works like a cookie jar. And initially in a cookie jar, there'll be zero cookies. Later we can keep adding cookies. So this is our score and which is zero initially. So let's be here. And we have to increase the score every time when we touch the balloon. How can we increase the score? To increase the score, we need math operation. In math, we need plus. So we're going to keep adding one. So let's take this. So we're going to add one. So we're going to go to math. We're going to take this. We're going to put it here. Or else you can right click on it. You can duplicate it and you can put it here. So we're going to add one. We're going to add one to where are we going to add this one to? We're going to add this one to our score. So keep your cursor here. Don't click on it. Just keep your cursor here. If you keep your cursor here, you get to see these two blocks. So let me take this get global score and put it here. So what will happen is it will give me the current score and it will add one to it. It will take the current score. It will add one to it. So it will take the current score, it'll add one to it. And where they're supposed to be stored? So the score again, set global score. So what, what should happen? The score, that is our global score. So you can drag this like this. Keep your mouse on the white screen. Drag like this to left. The screen goes to left. Drag it towards, sorry. Drag it to right, it goes to right. Drag it to left, it goes left. Okay, so if we go here, you get to see get score, set score, get score, it will get me the current score, set score, using which I can change my score. Okay, so I'll take my score, I'll add one to it and I'll change my global score. I'll change the score. Why it is global? Because it can be accessed from anywhere. That's why it's called global. So this is global score, set global score. Where do I get the set global score and get global, global score from here? If you just keep your cursor here, you get this both. Or else you can go to variables and you can use this get set. If you go to variables, you get this get and set. You can just click on it and you can change the name. So set is where we can change the score, get is where we can get the current score. How much the score is, we can get to know by this. We get the score, we add one and we set that, we set the score. So where this is supposed to be added, we'll just put it here. Okay. The score is increased. That's not the, like score is increased, but it will be not displayed in our game. Why? We have done everything. Score is there, zero is there, initially it will be zero. Every time when we open it for the first time, it will be zero. Even if it is 100 for the last time, in the last time when you played, you got 100. If you open the game again, it will be initialized to zero. And every time when you touch the balloon, the global score is going to increase and we're going to update the score. Everything is good. But why still the game score will not, why still the, uh, the score will not get increased? Because we have not given this to our label, correct? So this is our label two. Can you see this? This one is selected. This is our label two. We have to update that number to our label two. Yes. Until we update this value to our label two, it will never show the score. The score keeps increasing, but it will be not shown in the game. So we're going to go to label two. Get the green block, change this to text, it can be anything, change it to text and go here, 
get this one get score i put it here so label to text will change it to get score so here what what would happen is the score would have got updated we'll get a score one is added to it and that will be set so using this whatever the updated score we can see it we can we can get an access to it so let's run this now this is all done let me close this let me close this too let me close this too let me close this too let me close this let me close this only this is left let me click on build save to save apk to my computer and by the time it uh, this finishes what we will do open new tab what we have to open appetize.io slash upload or else you can just open appetize.io and there you can click on upload to get to see the screen the screen is ready we'll go and wait it will take some time have some patience So you can see this is hundred percent now, and the apple got yeah, it has got downloaded. And it says one because there is another download downloaded file. That's why it says one. So if I go and see in the folder, refresh, I have one which says one, and I'll say this is nothing because there was another one. That's why this is says one in the brackets. So let it be this. So this is the updated one. Balloon pop one. Balloon pop one. So let me go here in our appetize.io slash upload. Select file. So we have to select which one? The one which has one. Just make make the name sure. This which has one. Open it. By the time it opens, let me select my email ID. So I have given my email ID. It says file successfully up, up, uploaded. Generate success. Please check your email. I'll change my email ID. Gmail. I would have got a mail. Yeah, here it is. Yes, so 1149, 1149, click on this, tap to play, game started, click on it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Six, 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 come on. Yeah, like this, you can keep popping the balloons. And if you want more balloons, what you can do is you can add some more sprite. Image sprite. Where do you get the image sprite? Go to drawings and animation. Add one more here. Add one more here. For this, the same property is how much heading is 270 height is. 100 pixel width is 70 pixel and picture you can choose the second one or the one which you know which one to choose in my case the second one click on cancel sorry i click on the second one click on ok watch yes that's the right image 
If that's not the right image, select another one. We will change the image. See, this is not the one. This is the one. Click on OK. Changed. And rotate is unchecked. Speed is how much? You can keep any number. So this is perfect. And also let me make the same thing here. 270. Height is 100 again. Width is 70. 70. And the picture, the second one. Rotates, no. Speed will be more 10. That's it. Let it be here. Okay, so this is all done. Go to blocks. Duplicate the same block. If you can't move like this, you can use the slider and you can move it. If you want to move up and down, you can use the slider. If you want to zoom it out, click on minus. If you want to zoom it, click on plus. If you click on this, this will be the original size. So I have duplicated, that's why it's showing X mark. Let me go confirm this. The center one is sprite one. We have already done it. We have to do it for sprite two and sprite three. Let's do it for sprite two. So change everything to sprite two. Everything is to sprite two. Whatever it says, sprite one, change to sprite two. See, sprite one I have here. I have duplicated it and the duplicated one is here. I'm changing for the duplicated one. Only change image sprite 2, image sprite 2, image sprite 2, image sprite 2. Let the global score, let it be the same and label uh, label 2 also let it be the same. Okay, again we'll duplicate this. Now this time we have to change it to sprite 3. Sprite 3, sprite 3, sprite 3, sprite 3. And when you run this, now I'll show you how to run this in our phone. Click on build, QR code. When you click on build, you get the first option which says QR code. When you click on it, it keeps loading. And in your phone, you can open your QR code scanner. And you can install that. I'm just opening my QR code scanner in my phone. Just getting it ready. So it's done 100%. Now I'll get a QR code. I'm going to scan this QR code in my phone. So I got the QR code. I'm scanning this QR code using a QR code scanner. But one thing you have to keep it, keep in mind that is uh, this app can be installed only in Android phones, not in I iOS. That is, you can't install this app in Apple phones. It can be installed. It can be installed only in Android phones. So when I scan this, I get this link in my uh, in my phone. Scan this. Scan this QR code. Uh, make sure you get this link.